Today we invite you to join us on a journey through some of the world's most infamous and haunted places. From the cursed depths of the well from hell, where the echoes of tortured souls still linger, to the bone-chilling catacombs beneath the streets of Paris, where countless lost souls found their final resting place. We'll also uncover the mysteries of the Lizzie Borden cabin, where a gruesome and unsolved murder unfolded over a century ago. If you're a fan of the supernatural and want to explore the real-life nightmares that have haunted these places, you've come to the right channel. Subscribe now and ring the notification bell to join us on this spine-tingling journey through history's darkest secrets. Are you ready to face the chilling tales that these real locations have to offer? Stay tuned and prepare for the terror that awaits in the shadows. The Abyssal Gateway, a cursed expedition into the realm of unimaginable horrors. The desert stretched out endlessly before us, a vast sea of golden sand that seemed to swallow the horizon. We were a team of scientists and explorers, driven by our insatiable curiosity and thirst for knowledge. Our mission was simple yet perilous, to uncover the mysteries of the Door to Hell. The Door to Hell was a name given to a remote and desolate location in the heart of the Turkmenistan desert. It was not a literal door, but rather a massive fiery crater that had been burning for decades. The locals believed it to be cursed, a gateway to the underworld itself. But to us, it was a scientific enigma, waiting to be unravelled. As we approached the site, the air grew thick with tension. The intense heat was unbearable, even from a distance. We had come prepared, our protective suits shielding us from the scorching temperatures. Our leader, Dr Emily Reynolds, a brilliant geologist, was the driving force behind this expedition. We're here, everyone, she announced, her voice crackling over the radio. Prepare to descend. The descent into the fiery abyss was a treacherous one. We used ropes and harnesses to lower ourselves down, each step taking us closer to the infernal moor. The roar of the flames grew deafening as we approached, and the ground beneath us radiated with an intense heat that threatened to sear our protective gear. At last, we reached the edge of the crater. The sight that greeted us was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. The flames within the pit danced like malevolent spirits, their orange and red tongues reaching for the sky. The heat was oppressive, making it difficult to breathe, but we had a job to do. Dr Reynolds took out a device that resembled a long pole with a microphone attached to it. This was our means of probing the depths of the fiery chasm. As she prepared to lower it into the pit, I couldn't help but feel a shiver run down my spine. It was as if the very earth beneath us was alive pulsating with an otherworldly energy. The microphone descended into the flames and we listened intently to the crackling and hissing sounds that emanated from below. It was as if the pit itself was speaking to us, revealing its secrets one eerie sound at a time. Hours passed as we continued to record the infernal symphony, but then something changed. A voice, faint and distant, began to emerge from the crackling chaos. It was a language I had never heard before, guttural and filled with malice. The words sent a chill down my spine, and I could see the fear in my colleague's eyes. What is that? Someone whispered over the radio. Dr Reynolds, her brow furrowed in concentration, tried to decipher the words. It's not any known language, she said. It's ancient. Ancient beyond anything we've ever encountered. As we continued to listen, the voice grew louder and more menacing. It was as if something was trying to communicate with us from the depths of the pit. And then the words became clear, and the message sent terror coursing through our veins. Open the door, the voice commanded. Open the door to hell. A cold sweat broke out on my brow as I realized the implications of those words. The very ground we stood on, the fiery abyss before us, was a doorway to a realm of unimaginable horrors. The legends were true, and we had unwittingly unlocked the gate. Panic spread through our group like wildfire. Some of us wanted to flee immediately, to escape this cursed place and seal the pit forever. But others, driven by a morbid curiosity or perhaps something darker, were drawn to the pit. They wanted to see what lay beyond, to uncover the truth of this ancient and malevolent force. Dr Reynolds, despite her initial reservations, was among those who wanted to press on. She believed that there was scientific knowledge to be gained from this encounter, that we could unlock the secrets of a world beyond our own. But I could see the fear in her eyes, the uncertainty that gnawed at her resolve. 
As the debate raged on, the voice from the pit grew more insistent. It promised power and knowledge beyond imagination, but it also whispered of suffering and damnation. I felt a sense of dread wash over me, as if a malevolent presence was reaching out from the abyss to ensnare us in its grasp. In the end, it was Dr. Reynolds who made the fateful decision. She ordered the team to lower a camera into the pit to capture whatever lay beyond the flames. As the camera descended, the flames seemed to part, revealing a dark and foreboding passage that led into the depths of the earth. The sight that greeted us on the camera's screen was beyond comprehension. It was a realm of nightmarish landscapes, twisted and contorted like a fever dream. Monstrous creatures moved in the shadows, their eyes filled with hunger and malevolence. It was a world of torment and suffering, a place where no mortal should ever tread. As we watched in horror, one of the creatures turned its gaze toward the camera, and I could feel its malevolent presence seeping through the screen. It knew we were watching, and it grinned, revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. With a sense of mounting dread, I realized that the gateway had been opened, and there was no way to close it. The creatures from beyond were aware of our presence, and they hungered for our souls. The expedition had turned into a nightmare, a descent into madness and terror. We were trapped in a realm of unimaginable horrors, our only hope of escape slipping away with each passing moment. As the creatures drew closer, their grotesque forms illuminated by the hellish flames, I knew that we had unleashed something beyond our understanding. The cursed expedition had become a living nightmare, and the door to hell had revealed its sinister secret. We were no longer explorers seeking knowledge. We were prisoners in a world of eternal darkness and torment, a world from which there was no escape. The haunting depths of the Paris catacombs. I couldn't resist the allure of the Paris catacombs. The idea of exploring these underground tunnels, lined with the bones of thousands, had always fascinated me. Little did I know that my curiosity would lead me to an experience that would haunt me for the rest of my life. It was a chilly autumn evening when I descended into the depths of the catacombs with a group of fellow adventurers. The air grew colder and damper with each step we took, and the flickering lanterns cast eerie shadows on the ancient walls. The sound of our footsteps echoed through the narrow passages, making it feel as if the very earth beneath us was alive, whispering secrets of the past. As we ventured deeper into the catacombs, the walls became lined with skulls and bones, stacked neatly in macabre arrangements. It was a chilling reminder of the countless souls who had met their end here. I couldn't help but shudder, but my companions reassured me that it was just a morbid form of artistry. We continued to explore the labyrinthine tunnels, guided only by the faint glow of our lanterns. The air grew heavy with a musty odour, and the silence was broken only by the occasional drip of water from above. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, but I dismissed it as mere paranoia. As we turned a corner, I stumbled upon a small alcove hidden away from the main path. Inside, I found a weathered journal, its pages yellowed with age. It seemed to be the diary of a previous explorer, and I couldn't resist the temptation to read it. The entries were filled with tales of strange occurrences in the catacombs, whispers in the dark, mysterious shadows, and a pervasive feeling of dread. I shared my discovery with my companions, and unease settled over the group. We decided to press on, but the atmosphere had changed. The tunnels seemed to close in around us, and the walls of bones appeared to be shifting, as if they were alive. I could hear faint whispers in the distance, voices that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. Hours passed, and the tunnels grew more convoluted. We had lost all sense of direction, and panic began to set in. It was then that we heard it, a chilling, otherworldly wail that echoed through the catacombs. My heart raced as I realised that we were not alone down here. The wail grew louder and a bone-chilling cold washed over us. Shadows danced on the walls, taking on grotesque forms. My companions and I huddled together, our lanterns flickering in the darkness. We couldn't see what was approaching, but we could feel its malevolence. As the wail grew closer, I could make out a figure emerging from the darkness. It was a spectre, a twisted and tormented soul, its features distorted in agony. It reached out towards us with bony skeletal fingers, and I screamed in terror. In that moment, the catacombs themselves seemed to come alive. 
the walls of bones closed in around us and the tunnels shifted, trapping us in a nightmarish maze. The spectre drew closer, its wail deafening, and I knew that we were doomed. In our desperation, we retraced our steps, trying to find our way back to the entrance. But the catacombs seemed to defy logic, leading us further into the abyss. The spectre was relentless, its wail echoing in our ears, driving us to the brink of madness. Just when it seemed that all hope was lost, a faint glimmer of light appeared in the distance. We rushed towards it, praying that it was the way out. As we drew closer, we realized that it was a narrow tunnel leading upwards, towards the surface. We climbed through the cramped tunnel, our hearts pounding with fear. At last, we emerged into the cold night air, gasping for breath. The catacombs had released their grip on us, but the memory of that night would haunt us forever. I often wonder what lurks in the depths of the Paris catacombs. Are there tormented souls trapped in the darkness, waiting to ensnare unsuspecting explorers? Or was it all a trick of the mind, a manifestation of our deepest fears? One thing is certain, I will never venture into those haunted tunnels again. The Paris catacombs hold secrets that are better left undisturbed, and I have no desire to tempt fate a second time. Whispers in the walls, my haunting night at the Lizzie Borden house. Lizzie Borden took an axe, she gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. The rhythmic creaking of the old floorboards echoed through the Lizzie Borden house as I stepped inside. The air was heavy with history, and a shiver ran down my spine as I realised that I was about to spend the night in one of the most infamous haunted locations in America. The Lizzie Borden House, located in Fall River, Massachusetts, was known for the gruesome murders that occurred within its walls over a century ago. In 1892, Lizzie Borden was accused of brutally axing her father and stepmother to death. She was famously acquitted, but the house forever bore the stain of the unsolved murders. As I settled into my room for the night, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The walls seemed to whisper secrets, and the shadows danced in strange patterns. I had always been fascinated by the paranormal, and I had come here hoping to experience something otherworldly. I turned off the lights and lay in the darkness, my heart pounding in anticipation. The silence of the house was oppressive, broken only by the occasional creak or groan of the old building settling. It was as if the house itself was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. And then it began. Faint whispers filled the room, unintelligible voices murmuring in the corners of my mind. I strained to listen, trying to make out the words, but they remained just out of reach. It was as if the very walls were trying to communicate with me, to tell me their secrets. A cold breeze swept through the room, chilling me to the bone. I pulled the covers tighter around me, but the chill remained. It was as if an unseen presence had entered the room, a presence that brought with it an aura of malevolence. I closed my eyes and tried to calm my racing heart, telling myself that it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. But then I heard it, the sound of footsteps, slow and deliberate, coming from the hallway outside my door. I opened my eyes and stared into the darkness, my breath catching in my throat. The footsteps grew louder, closer, until they were right outside my door. I could hear the soft rustle of fabric, the whisper of someone's breath. With trembling hands, I reached for the doorknob and slowly turned it. The door creaked open, revealing the empty hallway beyond. My heart pounded in my chest as I stepped into the dimly lit corridor, my footsteps echoing on the old wooden floor. I followed the sound of the footsteps, my senses on high alert. They led me down a winding hallway, past closed doors that seemed to hold their own secrets. I had a sinking feeling that I was not alone in the house, that something was guiding me deeper into its dark heart. The footsteps led me to a narrow staircase that descended into the basement. I hesitated for a moment, my instinct screaming at me to turn back, but I couldn't resist the pull of the unknown. I descended into the darkness, my footsteps echoing in the cold, damp air. The basement was a labyrinth of shadowy corners and hidden alcoves. I could feel eyes on me, watching my every move. I whispered into the darkness, my voice trembling with fear. Is anyone there? And then a voice answered, a soft, eerie whisper that sent chills down my spine. Lizzie, it said, a name that carried with it a history of violence and death. 
I spun around, searching for the source of the voice, but there was no one there. The darkness closed in around me, and I could feel a malevolent presence pressing in from all sides. I was not alone in the basement. I was surrounded by unseen forces. As I stood there, paralysed with fear, I felt a cold hand on my shoulder. I turned to see a figure standing behind me, a figure cloaked in shadow. In its hand, it held a gleaming axe, its blade stained with blood. It was then that I understood. The Lizzie Borden house was not just haunted by the ghosts of the past. It was a portal to a realm of darkness and despair. The house itself was a malevolent entity, feeding on the fear and suffering of those who dared to enter. I screamed and tried to run, but the darkness closed in around me, and the figure with the axe reached out with its cold, skeletal fingers. I could feel its presence enveloping me, pulling me deeper into the abyss. As I gasped for breath, the walls of the Lizzie Borden house seemed to close in around me, and I knew that I would never escape its clutches. I had ventured too far into the heart of darkness, and now I was doomed to become a part of its twisted history. The figure then raised its axe and swung it down. The rhythmic creaking of the old floorboards continued, echoing through the house, a haunting reminder of the horrors that lurked within the walls of the Lizzie Borden house. Thanks for watching. To support us, please like and subscribe.